work. Molly Motorsports is the official piston of DragonDrive.com. Molly's Power Pack Piston is the perfect candidate for your drag and drive car. Molly Motorsports competes in drag and drive events and supports our community. Project manager Eric Grillio raced a 10 second stick shift Nova at Hot Rod Drag Week 2022. He's also competed in Rocky Mountain Race Week last year with his C10 truck. Visit mollymotorsports.com for the most recent line of products. Yep. And Eric Grillio and his Nova competed at Rocky Mountain Race Week earlier this year. So uh, that's pretty awesome. So I don't know if we'll see him back for 2.0 or not, but it was fun to hang out with him. And I think the guy that was with him, his name was Andrew and, uh, and just had a good time, man. It was, uh, I got, went up for the last day of Rocky mountain. So it'll be cool to see all those folks again. All right. But before race week, we have hot rod drag week. Yep. Um, man, I, I said this the other day and I, it probably made some people upset, but y'all, I think this is going to be the event that is going to change up the dragon drive world champion drastically. One, because I don't quite have the um, contacts with everybody that race there, right? Like I do from racing at race week. You know, I know a lot of those racers, and so it's not hard for me to reach out. So I just don't have the contacts from drag week. Now, I went to 2022, but going to 2023 in a lot different scenario, I'm going to uh, be talking to everybody and anybody. <laughs> but for this week, we're going to talk about these small block Sorry, the street race, small block power adder class, because again, that's one of my favorites. And it is going to be highly contested for uh, for Hot Rod Drag Week 2023, mainly because Dustin Trance and Steve Trance is at are coming back. They are returning. They are the current class record holder and they've won it back to back. So can they do it three times in a row in what is I don't know, possibly the hardest class that's out there because an 850 car is very hard to, to race at that level. Like you're, you're either going 155 or 170. So uh, they, they hold the class record for ET at an 8515 set last year. And then we're going to talk about in a minute what it, what the mile per hour record is as well. Is so that, is that an LS card, you know? Yes, yes, single turbo LS. I think um, I saw it at Midwest Drags and Byron uh, oh, probably. La- last year. And if I remember right, I might even have a video of it. I think it ran an 850 exactly there. Yeah. Uh, on Drag Week, yes, they did. They, they're they one of five people in that class to ever run an 8500. Nice. So, pretty, so I, uh, I, sh- I, probably have that, I probably have that on video somewhere. Dude, you should post that up. That would be great. Yeah, I'll, t- I'll take a look <laughs> for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, they, he definitely one of the only guys. I think only four people have done that in, in history. So pretty awesome. Um, I obviously reached out to Dustin, asked him what their plans are. He said it's going to be tough. They've had no testing uh, since Palm Beach International Raceway shut down. And there's going to be, he literally said, we've had no testing since PBR shut down, and there should be some good competition. Y'all, that's an understatement. <laughs> There's going to be some really uh, strong competition. Brian Acton and Jay Blanchard, Fast Act Racing, are coming back. Uh, they've been testing all year. They've won three 850 classes already. They won at the circuit. They are the fastest quarter mile car at the circuit. And they won their 850 class at Summit Racing Midwest Drags. And then they won an 850 class at just a regular weekend type race that car is dialed into the max and they are consistently testing all the time so the afco shocks and all that kind of stuff uh mark campbell is coming back if you guys will remember him last year he put the everybody on their ear because he ran an 8504 on day one and an 8505 on day two and literally one and done both days went in knocked out his pass and was on the road he said this year could be a challenge as well so it ought to be pretty interesting to see that car do what it's going to do we don't have a photo of richard flint because he said he's not coming uh he's if you guys follow him on facebook he's rebuilding and upgrading the s2000 that he races so he's skipping drag week this year with plans for fl2k and 
plans to take that car to a low seven second uh, super street class competitor level. And then Emily Ballard, who we also don't have a picture of because she's not coming because she is getting married. So I don't blame her. You know, I saw but, that post. Yeah. 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 Uh, Tom Franks, we do have a photo of him. He is unsure as well. So he said the car's running, but he hadn't had a chance to do any testing. So at least he's ahead of some folks uh, that don't even have their car running. And then Steve Brack is coming in the red and black S10. He was at uh, the circuit as well this year, uh, raced in the 275 eighth mile class. So that ought to be pretty fun. It'd be great to see him again. Um, I do want to talk about the the class a little bit here. Current class ET average record holder, Dustin and Steve. Um, I think if you click the next one, we'll go to that. Yep. So um, they're going to be tough to beat. They really do have this car dialed in. Uh, if anyone can do it, I, I think any of the racers above can, though, man. I, and those are just the racers that were in the top 10 in that class in 2022 that I messaged to see if they're coming back. So I didn't reach out to anyone else any earlier. Um, the current class mile per hour record, though, is held by Brett LaSala. You remember him in the, the snot rocket, the green rocket. Um, from 2019 with a 168 mile an hour average, 168.74 mile an hour um, average, y'all. That's that's going to be pretty tough. So, you know, we have an ET record and we have a mile per hour record. So you got to think a guy like uh, Brian that gets out early and gets it done and a guy like Dustin, like his 8515 ET average only had 159 mile an hour speed average. Right. So he's like, you know, like for him to get another almost 10 miles an hour, it would be really, really hard to set both of those. And that's what we saw at Midwest Drags, too. You know, we had um, we had the ET record and then another eight miles an hour was Mike Mayone, who reset it at 162 miles an hour. So, right. So pretty awesome. You know, again, I don't know. I don't know if we'll have if we'll do points for 2024s. Dragon Drive World Champion for uh, for mile per hour average. I think ET is probably our way to go there because everybody has always gathered that. And then when Drag Week ends, the NHRA is doing an exhibition of Dragon Drive racers with an invitation to the 850 class specifically of Hot Rod Drag Week for the Carolina Nationals, which is the Betway Carolina Nationals. It's literally 105 miles from when we end at Darlington. It's 105 miles north to um, to Z Max Raceway, so I've never been to that track. So I'm I'm doing both of the events. So I'll be at Drag Week and then drive up to uh, to Z Max. So that's kind of exciting. They have done this before. Rick Steinke won it in 2019 when they did it last time. Um, they were obviously at Virginia Motorsports Park, so it's probably a little further of a drive. But I think it makes a lot of sense. And again, NHRA giving drag and drive racers uh, an opportunity to have some exhibition runs and especially this 850 class i'm telling you you guys know i love it but these cars are and i say it all the time i feel like these cars are a car that if the hood is not popped it looks like a really nice car with a good set of wheels on it these cars can go anywhere they can do anything they're easy to get in and out of all that kind of stuff. That's why I love the 850 class. So Rick Steinke won in the uh, crew cab Malibu, uh, the 850 class when they did this in 2019. Here's what's crazy to me. He won it with an 869 average. And then Scott Brown took second with an 893 average. So big swing there. And obviously this is like an eight or 10, eight or 12 car field. So it's not just a ton of racers here. And then Lisa Fisher, who hasn't who didn't attend in 22, but attended in 2021 in her Grand National. She took third in 2019 with a 9058 average at the Z, at the Z Max um, 850 Invitational there. So we know Jay and Brian are coming. I know Steve Brack is going to this. I don't know who else is going to this. So if you do know that you have been invited and you intend to attend. Hit me up. Let me know. Um, we want to definitely follow along with your story during Drag Week and then also uh, for Z Max. I will be say, cool. 
Yeah, there is a racer group that are bringing an extra engine to drag week in case something happens during the week. They will go back to the truck and trailer and swap engines and go to compete in the in the Z-Max Carolina Nationals event. So that's going to be pretty cool. I'm, I'm really excited about that. So, yeah, I think it's a really cool opportunity. And I love oh. seeing the, you know, the yeah. collaboration with the NHRA, because we've said before, if we can get those guys to to come over and to, to drag and drive, it's just going to grow our community even more. So, yep. Yep. That is 100% true. And you attended the, the route 66 event, which is awesome to, to see all those racers that are out there. And, you know, anytime we can bring more light to, you know, our 850 racers, I'm, I'm all for it. So uh, moving on to the next bit of stuff here, Jeffrey Mink made a great post on the drag week, drag weekers, Facebook group. Uh, he said he built these panels saying maybe it will help direct the air and build more static pressure uh, in front of the condenser and radiator. Now, if he says conten- condenser, that means he's probably got AC on that thing. That's what I got to get next. Um, <laughs> said If not, it makes a great tool tray. So there's a, there's a few shots here. Uh, there's one where he has a, uh, has a beer in one and I, I left it off, but this, this would make great uh, just a- airflow correction around there i think that is one of the biggest things for drag and drive racers you know we get the cars together then you've got to go back and you start again putting all these things together to make it work yeah so that's why having the same car for a few years to me makes more sense instead of building a new one uh, every year my problem with this is i would leave tools laying in there and i would think there'd be like a rod knocking or something and it'd just be that like 13 millimeter wrench just up there bouncing around, you know, right. the tin is already out and on the ground. It's gone. But um, <laughs> so I, I think this is, this is a good idea. We're going to be in a little bit of um, up and down a little mountainous areas, I think for drag week. So it ought to, ought to really tax some cooling systems, you know, not a ton of elevation there, like you see on Rocky mountain, but you know, strains on the car, strains on the converter, keeping things warm, all that kind of stuff. So I think it said earlier, we've got two days of 250 mile drives. So that'll be pretty fun. I'm, I'm hoping I can jump in with some racers uh, throughout the week and maybe ride with them. The struggle for drag week for me is that I need to be able to come and go as I please to the track. So going to have a, a, an, um, a struggle there, whether I'm going to keep driving myself or if I'm going to jump in with somebody. So, Well, speaking of airflow, you know, Anybody needs a trim ring? I've got those for sale for yes. mostly for Mustangs, but I can design something for anything. In fact, just before the show, I shipped out number 82. Wow. So pretty awesome for something that, again, I just kind of started because I wanted one on my car. So yep. if anybody is interested in something like that, hit me up. Um, I do offer discounts for those in the drag and drive community. That's cool, man. Well, that's a uh, awesome. Congratulations on, on 82 there. Thank you. And yep. One other, some other folks that, uh, help keep all these drag and drive cars going is sweet patina. Love having them on board for the sweet patina built for drag and drive sponsorship for 2023. You know, we featured some really nice cars on that, but sweet patina not only does that, but they offer detail products, apparel, garage art. They've got all kinds of things. My favorite item that they offer those, the TKO hand cleaning wipes. It's actually in the shop right now. I'm, I now literally meant to grab them before I close the door uh, to record this tonight. So they're heavy duty waterless wipe. I use them to clean tools. I use them to clean my hands. I use them to clean, for some reason, my shins always get really dirty. <laughs> so you can use code DND57 when you are ordering from sweetpatina.com or you can, when you're on your summit racing order, placing all that stuff we talked about earlier, you can order it and, uh, and Sweet Patina has their products available there as well. That is right. I do have, or uh, one of my favorite stickers, one of my favorite is uh, their go fast parts before paint. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. And that's one thing that they live. They, you know, they've put 48,000 miles on that. Yeah probably more now on the uh, 57 wagon yeah the uh, the